My Lord, the Chief Judge of Benway State. My Lord, the President, the Customary Court of Appeal. State Chairman of the All Progressives Congress and the Local Government Chairman here present. Honorable Members of the Benway State House of Assembly here present. The Chairman and Members of the Statutory Commissions the permanent secretaries here present, our directors and senior government officials here present, our royal fathers here present, top government functionaries at all levels here present, chairman and members of the Central Planning Committee here present, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Solomon Iopave. I am your master of ceremonies for this occasion, and I'm working with my dear sister, Jenny Tohe. You can put your hands together for us, if you like. We'd like to welcome you this morning to the 70th birthday colloquium and symposium in honor of a phenomenon, in honor of an icon, in honor of a colossus, the former governor of Benway State, the former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the former honorable minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and now by the message of God, the secretary to the government of the Federation, His Excellency, Senator Dr. George Igbegbe Akume Dajo, commander of the Order of the Niger. We are celebrating 70 years of God's faithfulness, 70 years of God's mercies, 70 years of God's protection, 70 years of God's favor, 70 years of God's blessings. And so today we gather here as a people to thank God for his life and honor him for how far God has brought him to where he is today. May I at this juncture ask all of us to put our hands together for the celebrant, if you will. Going forward, therefore, I'd like to welcome he who is the chairman of this occasion and who, whom we will be taking directives going forward as far as this occasion is concerned. Let us welcome Dr. Kashim Ibrahim Imam, commander of the Order of the Niger. Put your hands together for him as he takes the microphone to give us the welcome remarks. Put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen, as he makes his way while he's coming, I'd like to recognize uh, the Deputy Governor of Benue State, His Excellency. Dr. Sam Ode. A round of applause for the Deputy Governor of Benue State, please. We'd like to welcome you very warmly. Mr. Chairman, the time is yours. I wish to warmly welcome each and every single one of us here present to this great colloquium, um, the first of its kind in celebration of the birthday, 70th birthday of our friend and brother and leader in the person of His Excellency, Senator, Governor, Minister, and now SGF Secretary to the Government of the Federation. I think we can do much better than this. For I, I, I stand to be corrected. There are very few people on the surface of the earth, not just in Nigeria, that it has, it has pleased the Almighty to so honor our son, our friend, 
our brother, our leader, Dr. George Akume, is 70 years old. And this calls for grand celebration. May I also recognize and thank our father, our leader, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the distinguished Senator Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, GCFR, uh, whose wife, as I speak, is on our way here to join in celebrating his SGF. I also want to recognize and thank our chief host, His Excellency, Father Hyacinth, your name, Alia, the Executive Governor of Benue State. He's our chief host, and for me personally, is my host. I spent three hours with him last night, and I'm happy to report to the House that he was at the residence of our leader, the SGF, this morning to seek his permission to represent Benue at an event that the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is hosting in Lagos this afternoon. However, Father Alia has requested that I convey to the audience his message that he will be on ground to host the grand reception holding in Wanone tomorrow. May I also recognize my dear sister, as the adage goes, behind every successful man is an equally successful woman. I know that they've been at here for long, close to 50 years, from the time that they were both very young. And I want you to know that it's as hot as if it just started yesterday okay. between the two of them. She is an Amazon in her own right. She is the member representing my constituency in the House of Representatives. She is no other person than the Honorable Regina Akumi. I want to keep the recognitions as short as possible, but uh, my friend and brother is on the high table also. Um, I want to quickly recognize him. He is in the person of His Excellency Ibrahim Samino Turaki, the former governor of Jigawa State. I've just seen another brother of mine, a son of the SGF, a former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, now the deputy governor of Benue State, in the person of His Excellency, Sam Ode. We have very limited time. I want to believe that in the course of this program, sufficient recognitions will be done. Um, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol, please. I've known His Excellency George Akume for more than 33 years today. It was Shakespeare who wrote, and I quote, some are born great. Some have greatness and trusted on them. Others acquire greatness. Our brother George Akumi was certainly not born great. But in the 
process of a very prolonged career, starting in the civil service, where he rose to become secretary, uh, um, permanent secretary. He went on to become governor. He went on to become senator. He went on to become minister. And today, by the grace of God, and a dent of hard work and dedication to duty, he is the secretary to the government of the Federation of Nigeria. I want to thank Mr. President for so appointing him on behalf of all the people of Benue. And I want to say that the president would not have chosen anyone better nor more deserving than George Akume for this critical role. George Akume is a very humble person. He personifies humility. He's a very kind and generous person. His house is whether in the village in Wanone, in Makodi here, in Abuja, at all times, in all manner of the night, is open to everybody. Akumie will share, gladly share his last cover with you. Akumie has built bridges across the length and breadth of this country. First, Senator Akumie built bridges within our own community, the Jemba people of Benue covering the three local governments, his own Taka local government, my own Boko local government, and Buruku. He united us as one people. And in the process of uniting us, he became our undisputed leader. But he wasn't just done with uniting the Jemba people. He united the five chief clans, Jemba, Hidda, Jetra, Kwande, and Sankara into one people. In the process of doing that, he has become the undisputed leader of we thieves worldwide. He extended this bridge to our brothers in the south of the state, to the people of Idoma and Igede. And Akume today is the undisputed leader of all of us from Benue State. He did not stop at that. He extended again the bridge across Nigeria to the Hausas, the Fulanis, the Kanuris, the Igbos, the Yorubas, across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Throughout the period that Akume was governor in Benue State, for eight long years, we had absolute peace. Nobody, it was long after he left office, uh, the word headsman, Fulani headsman was coined. But for the period that Akume was governor, Benue was at peace. Nobiso, I can't hear you. Nobiso, good. Akume is a man of many parts. I just want to end this introduction by making this statement that Akume is God's gift. To Nigeria. Akume is God's gift to humanity. We have every reason today to rejoice and to celebrate and to thank the Almighty for the gift of this wonderful brother of ours. I want to on this note welcome each and every single one of us and please enjoy the celebrations with us. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be moving to our hometown of Wanoni, and we'll be holding 
a grand reception for which the whole of Nigeria will join us. Thank you. Welcome. God bless us all. May I now formally declare the colloquium open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, if you ask me, I think the chairman of this occasion is deserving of a better round of applause. Sir, having known the uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation for a whooping 33 years, I can very well say that your choice as the chairman of this occasion is not a mystic at all. And we heard him and how he was able to narrate the history without even referring to a book, calling all the names in Tivland like he was born here. That is really huge indeed, and it exemplifies the fact that he is um, indeed very, very close to the SGF. So thank you very much for that remark. And you spoke my mind, Mr. Chairman, sir, when you said that the SGF is known on the surface of the earth. Because only a few minutes ago, I was thinking same, and you spoke my mind. Thank you very much. And as the chairman was making his remarks, we had the chair lady of this occasion walk in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and privilege to um, invite to the podium for her remarks, Her Excellency Dame Pauline Tallon, OFRKSG, a Nigerian active politician, a former Deputy Governor of Plateau State, and until recently, a Honorable Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development in Nigeria. A round of applause for Dame Pauline Tallon, please. The chairman of this great occasion, my dear brother, Kachim Imam, the celebrant of this great historic occasion where we are all gathered to celebrate an icon, a leader per excellence, distinguished Senator Akume and his dear wife, Honorable Regina Akume. I want to specially acknowledge the presence of the executive governor of Benue State, who is ably represented here by the deputy governor. I acknowledge all former governors here present. Permit me to stand on already established protocol because the list of dignitaries gathered here cannot be quantified. Distinguished Nigerians all gathered here, we are here to celebrate a leader, a great Nigerian, a true son of Benue, but a Nigeria, a Nigerian that accommodates and embraces every Nigerian. So, in a nutshell, I would describe distinguished Senator Akume as a true leader and a Nigerian that every Nigerian will be proud of. He has proved true leadership in all the offices he has held. And today, we in the North Central, we are proud to have a true leader, a son that embraces all sitting as the SGF of the Federal Government of Nigeria. I thank God for your life. I thank God that you've reached the biblical age of 70. And by the grace of God, you will live to celebrate 80 in good health. You will live to celebrate 90 in good health. You will live to celebrate 100 in good years. Looking at the cream of Nigerians all gathered here for this colloquium, I must thank God for your life. This is a festive period, a holy season, but despite that, 
great Nigerians from far and near have taken time to be here to honor you because of who you are. I want to thank all of you that have taken time to come and celebrate this great Nigerian. I've known distinguished Senator Akume for over 23 years, since when the formation of the PDP in 1998. And he, when he became, won the election and became governor of Benway State, I was also appointed Minister of State Science and Technology. And since then, we have worked closely, and I can proudly say that this is a true Nigerian that we are proud of, that I'm proud to call a brother and to describe a selfless Nigerian that can offer his life for anyone as long as you are his own. Today, as we gather to celebrate his 78th birthday, I call on all of us to stand with him in prayers so that he will come out glaringly a great achiever to achieve what no one has achieved in that office. Our prayer is that you will leave an indelible mark as the SGF supporting Mr. President, supporting and ensuring that all Nigerians are united to give their and support and give their quota in this country. Once again, I congratulate you on this great day. I congratulate all, gathered, all those gathered here to celebrate this great Nigerian. And as we listen to the speakers at this colloquium, I believe that we will leave this place more enriched about who the man Akume is. Looking at the array of people, we know that he is a special gift to Benue, to the North Central, and to Nigeria at large. Once again, congratulations, my dear brother. Congratulations to the people of Benue. I call on all the people of Benue to give him the maximum support, and all Nigerians to give him the maximum support so that he will continue to make us proud as our representative in Mr. President's cabinet as the SGF of this country. Thank you, and well done. Thank you. A round of applause for Her Excellency, the former Deputy Governor of Plateau State, former Minister of State, and former Minister as well. Um, in her words, she says, all of us are going to come back here 30 years from now to celebrate 100th birthday of His Excellency. If you believe that, put your hands together for yourselves and for His Excellency. That's a good prayer. Your Excellency, I'll still be the master of ceremony on that day. By that time, I'll be 72 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to... Madam Chair Lady, I want to let you know that His Excellency has only two members in his class. Former governors, former senators, former ministers. You have taken in that footstep as a former deputy governor, former minister of state and former minister. By the message of God, you'll be the next governor of Plateau State. We are praying for you. It will come to pass. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to let you realize that today we are celebrating an institution. And the colloquium and symposium you are attending today is the beginning in the first of the series that are to come. This has become a national event that will be holding yearly by the message of God in honor of this institution that God has given us in the name of His Excellency, Judge Akume. A round of applause for him one more time. Moving forward, for those of us who are seated here and you have no idea who this man we're celebrating is all about, I'd like to invite his son, a man who knows him better than anyone else, a businessman, an excellent man and humble man in his right to please step forward to take uh, this uh, citation and tell us about his excellency. He's a man of very few words, so he's going to give us a summary of summaries. Put your hands together as we welcome Mr. Chairwire. 
A round of applause for him, please. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to present a brief citation of His Excellency Senator George Akume. Born 7th December 1953, Senator George Akume, former Executive Governor of Bainway State, is a successful career civil servant, an accomplished administrator, honest politician, and a member of the great Tender Hall of Fame, University of Ibadan. He hails from Anune, Taka Konsu area of Benue State, a local government named after the famous minority right crusader, late Senator Joseph Sawan Taka. He had his primary education in the then Native Authority, Primary School Wanunen, 1960 to 1966, and the former Government Secondary School, Otobi, now Modern Science School, Otobo, Benue State, 1967 to 1971, for his secondary education. George was, the great George was at St. Louis College for his advanced level 1973, and thereafter proceeded to the Premier University, the University of Ibadan, for his Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology, 1978. He also obtained a Master's degree in Industrial and Labor Relations from the same department and university, 1986. He was at the Administrative College of Nigeria, ASCON, where he obtained a Certificate in Management. He was at the Oxford University, United Kingdom in 2010 for a certificate in leadership as well as the Queen's University, Ontario, Canada in 2012 for yet another certificate in leadership. Senator George Akume, the great George, commenced his working career as a land officer with the Benue State Civil Service in 1979 after his successful completion of the mandatory National Youth Service Corps. 1978 to 1979 service year, during which he taught at the Advanced Teachers College, just now College of Education at Kwanga, Nasarawa State. He had a steady progression in his career as a seasoned administrator. He held several positions at various times Assistant Secretary Research and Policy Analysis, REPA in the Governor's Office, Principal Secretary, Under Secretary, and Director of Personnel Management in 1994. He also handled several special assignments, including secretary, chairman, white paper drafting committee, secretary, Boko Local Government Council, 1988-1989, sole administrator of Ida Local Government Council, now in Kogi State, 1989-1990. to The great George was also the sole administrator of Boko Local Government Council, 1991. He was the director of Protocol Government House, Makodi Benue State. 1992. Between 1994 and 1995, he was on secondment at the Federal Ministry of Education, Lagos, as Deputy Director. The Great George became the Director General in 1986 and later Permanent Secretary, Establishments and Management Services, a position he held until 1998 when he voluntarily retired from public service to participate fully in partisan politics. On entry into politics, Senator George Akume registered as a member of the Defund Congress for National Consensus, CNC, one of the five registered political parties during the Sunday Abacha transition to civil rule. He sought the governorship ticket on that party platform. At the inception of General Absalom Abubakar's regime, after the sudden de demise of General Abacha on June 8, 1998, the new helmsman dismantled all political structures set up by the late general and ordered the formation of new political parties. The new dispensation afforded the great George the opportunity to further realize his ambition in partisan politics. He actively participated in the formation of the People's Democratic Party and contested election on the party's platform, a victory that made him become the fourth executive governor of Benue State in 1999. He was re-elected for a second term in 2003. In 2007, the great George, 
Senator George Akume was elected into the National Assembly as a senator representing Benue North West Senatorial District under the platform of the People's Democratic Party. In 2011, the great George moved to the Action Congress of Nigeria to join hands with other progressive minds to change the social, political, and economic face of the nation and was re-elected as Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was subsequently elected Senate Minority Leader by the Minority Caucus of the Senate. In 2015, the great George, Senator Akume, was for the third time elected as Senator representing Benue North Senatorial District and was subsequently appointed Senate Committee Chairman on Army. Senator George Akume, the great George, served as Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs from 2019 to 2023 under President Muhammad Buhari. He was appointed Secretary to the Government of the Federation by President Bola Tinubu in, on June 3rd, 2023, a position he holds till date and will hold for a long time. The great George, Senator George Akume, has been honored with many awards, including most distinguished alumnus of the University of Ibadan, Alumni Association, honor awards by the Benue State and River State branches of the UIA, and a life member of UIAA. <laughs> distinguished Humanist Award, Best Performing Governor of PDP Governors from the North Central Zone, Patron of the Institute of Public Relations, Fellow Nigeria Institute of Management, Fellow of the Sociological Association of Nigeria, and Ambassador of Peace, among others. The great George is also a recipient of the key to the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, USA. He's also a recipient of the... Ni is also a recipient of the Nigerian National Honors, Commander of the Order of Niger. <laughs> Senator Akume, whom the President calls the Great George, is a widely traveled man. He has visited the United States, Great Britain, Germany, France, Italy, Cuba, he has been to Ghana, South Africa, Jamaica, Israel, India, Brazil, Colombia, Thailand, Japan, Taiwan, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, Mexico, Switzerland, and Jamaica. This is the great George. I call him the great George because once Senator Akume took Dakwan I, if he remembers very well, Dakwan I to see the then leader of the APC in his home in Lagos. And as typical of him, he didn't leave us in the car, he didn't leave us in the waiting room, he didn't leave us in the ante room. He took us in there and we were warmly received by Remy Tinubu, the leader's wife who sat us down and told us the president would join us, that the leader would join us soon. We were there for a few minutes. The president strolled in. And the first thing he said was, the great George, you are here. That's why I call him the great George. This is Senator George Akumen. Thank you all. Thank you very much on the beautiful cit citation on the person of the distinguished senator, Dr. George Akume, the secretary to the government of the Federation. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for the just George. I, see, I think that's going to be our takeaway for today, the just George. I love the way um, Chia Waya kept uh, calling that name. So um, that is it. I, I'm, I'm sure that is just a bit of who the Secretary to the Government of the Federation is. He has indeed been called and known by so many names and different personalities. 
He's rightly called an institution which he is. A lot of people refer to him as one who is very humane and that indeed his humane part is actually part of his weakness because he's very kind to even his enemies. But I want to think differently. I want to agree differently. It is due to his kindness that he's been elevated time after time after time. And if you agree with me, please let's put our hands together for the SGF one more time. The SGF is a man who has defied political times and seasons. He's one who has defied um, opposing forces and has come out victorious at all times. He is indeed a very great personality. One who has made, not only made the Thief Nation very proud, one who has not made uh, just the Benue state proud, but one who has made the entire North Central very proud and indeed Nigeria very proud. Thank you very much. Uh, for that beautiful citation on the person of the SGF. So for our viewing pleasure, I'd like to invite now for entertainment the arts and culture troupe from Benway State for their presentation. Please can we have the arts and council troupe to pre make presentation for us, please, if you're ready. Nemba mini tu tat se na hane vaya hine kuala tsua e se mulu e afgane.
Thank you, thank you. For the sake of time or the lack of it, we're going to bring the dance to a round off now. The Benue Arts Council have been declared the best dancers in the world. They received award as the best dance troupe in the world. We'd like to thank you. Please, can we stop spraying? It's against the NBC code. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the Benue Arts Council. Um, Your Excellencies, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, as I told you earlier, today we celebrate an icon. And before we like, we'll continue, I'd like to welcome the chairman of the Benue State APC. Put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you. Thank you for coming and God bless you. Uh, moving on now, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Can I draw our attention once again to the fact that all of us are on live television? The rowdiness does not speak well for the man we're celebrating today. He's a very coordinated man. When people watching home and abroad begin to see you moving around, they will not believe that we're celebrating this same man that stands for protocol. Please. Let's avoid coming to the high table. We can greet His Excellency after the event. We have only two hours to take this program, so let's make it go well. I have instructions from the Vice Chancellor of this great university, from whom most of the lecturers are going to come from. And so I'd like to declare by the authority given to me by this great Vice Chancellor that every man who is coming here to speak has less than 10 minutes and I have the authority to receive the microphone after that because I'm standing behind the Vice Chancellor. Ladies and gentlemen, to begin this session today, to honor this great man we're honoring with a symposium and a colloquium that has come to stay, we'd like to begin by inviting someone who is well known in the academia. I'd like to invite the Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies and Director Abuja Center for European Studies, Department of Public Administration, University of Abuja, Nigeria. I'd like to welcome a professor of public sector management and governance who will be speaking on the diversity and inclusiveness for a resilient Nigeria, the imperatives of unity and development. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Uketo Gabriel Muti. Put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Professor, you have five minutes, and by the message of God, seven. And beyond that is eight, and after that, I take the microphone. A round of applause for him one more time. Mr. Chairman of the occasion, the celebrant and his fashionable wife, the Deputy Governor of Benway State, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press. The paper has been circulated, and so I just tell some few stories to buttress what is there. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you again because 
for the second time you are showing leadership. The first time was when we met in 2011. Immediately after COVID in uh, Dubai, you led us to TED Fund TOT training. Thank you, Chairman. It's a very nice pleasure for me to give this lecture in honor of our distinguished son, the son of Tiv Benuel and Nigeria, distinguished Senator George Akume. I met Senator Dr. George Akume in 1992 where we worked together in government house. He was the director of protocol in the short-lived administration of late Reverend Father Moses Oshio Adasu. I was a special assistant to the governor and his chief speech writer. And we worked very closely because we coordinated the activities of the government house. Today, we are honoring you. Actually, tomorrow is your birthday. You almost had the same birthday with my wife. Her birthday will be coming on the 28th. So, both of you are post-Christmas babies. Mr. Chairman, sir, when I was... In the primary school in Okari, by then Benue Plateau State and later Gongola State and now Taraba State. It was during the war. And we used to hear this jingle, to keep Nigeria one is the task that must be done. That shows that Nigeria is a diverse country and it needs to be managed for the sake of the greatness and harnessing of its potentials. And that is why I'm talking, I was speaking rather on this topic of diversity and inclusion in Nigeria. And to show that we are very diverse and sometimes we do not understand ourselves very well. When I eventually went to the University of Port Harcourt, as a young man in my early 20s for my first degree, I was the only northerner in a class of 24. And I remember our lecturer then, he's late now, Professor Kim Seokoko and a German. Whenever there was any example coming from the north, he would say, Gabriel, this uh, Katu Rara from the north, what do you say? Now, that shows you the extent to which Nigeria, even now, does not understand its diversity and the power that is in that diversity. And diversity is so important, and we need to manage it. It can be cultural, religious, gender, or even disability. But there is an aspect of diversity that we have never thought of, which we should think of. And it bl brings inclusion. That is economic diversity. We are not the same. We are different. And we need to also manage that diversity. And that is why today when people say the unity of Nigeria is non-negotiable, that may be correct, desirable, but not completely true. Because we have seen other countries like Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, they were also culturally diverse countries. But today, we have Croatia, Slovenia, Macedonia coming out of that country. We have the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Just because they were not able to manage their diversity. And that has led to what has brought them down. And so in Nigeria, it seems we measure on the negatives of our own diversity and downplay the positives of this diversity. 
And that is why when you look at the statistics, including Nigeria, when it is the negative, we seem to rank high. When it is a positive, we seem to rank low. For instance, we are a diverse religious people. And statistics show us that in Nigeria, or rather in the world, we are the second most praying country in the world. Next to, wait for it, Afghanistan. But when it turns the other way around, we are also the second most insecure country in the world. And of course, next to same Afghanistan. So how are we managing our religious differences that it is leading to this negativity? Our former anthem recognized that we were a diverse people. And that is why it said, though tribe and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand. And it is the same diversity that has brought a lot of us together here today. And the man we are honoring today seemed to have followed the pathway of his uncle, the late Joseph Sawan Taka, who a minority made an inroad into the West, connecting with the action group of late Awolowo, Obafemi. And he also connected with the North, which the chairman had already reiterated here. Today, that connection has brought also honor to J.S. Taka. We have honored him with a university, honored him with a stadium in Boko, honored him with a foundation here, and of course, honored him with a local government. That is the power of diversity. I will manage it very well. Senator Kume has tried to do the same. He was the one connecting with our president today, Asuwaji Ahmed Bola Tinebu, brought ACN, Action Congress of Nigeria, into Benue. When everyone thought it was a Yoruba party, it is that smooth road he created that today the North Central, the Benue people, the T people, are rejoicing here that we have the 21st secretary to the federal government of Nigeria. It is because he has been able to manage this diversity. And for us to manage diversity, it goes with resilience also. And he has also been very resilient. His resilience has shown how he has stayed in politics right after becoming governor, ending in 2007. He went ahead to become almost everything. That is why today he is known as GSM, governor, senator, minister, and we add SGF. <laughs> That resilience has kept him going. Even when people thought they had retired him from politics, today, Nigeria, Benue, stands to honor him. And so how can we manage diversity using his office? That office is a behemoth of activities. It reaches out to every Nigerian through appointment, through implementation, monitoring and coordination of government policies and activities. And he needs to reach out to every aspect of Nigeria. And he is in a singular position to manage the diverse polity of Nigeria on behalf of His Excellency, the President. And therefore, that is why in managing diversity, capacity is needed. And that's why he also needs to build the capacity of his office. So that by the time he ends, everyone will have the audacity to stand and say, well done. I'm coming to an end. I know you have given me two minutes. I have ended. And that is why today we honor Senator Dr. George Akume. And let me now say, I wish distinguished Senator Dr. George Akume that you KSJ, G, C O N, a very wonderful 
70th platinum birthday. And may the Lord bless and keep you. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Professor Moti, for um, effectively delivering on your paper. Uh, for want of time, we will now go over the paper presented, and that is more so because you have the presentation there with you. So we won't go over the paper. Um, I'd like to invite for the next presentation, Professor Sawua Gabriel Nitio, and he's going to be speaking to us on the topic, George Akume, a man of peace with local and global impact. And if you're like me, I'm sure this topic will excite us all. It's going to reveal to us why the SGF is the way he is and how his uh, peace, peaceful nature has impacted both locally and globally. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The chairman of this occasion, Dr. Ibrahim Imam Shetima. The Vice Chairperson, Pauline Tallinn, the celebrant and his amiable wife, distinguished honorable member, Regina Akume, our mother. Your Excellencies, the Deputy Governor of Benue State, Dr. Sam Mode, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal. Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press, even if I'm not able to recognize, I recognize each and every one of you here. Greatest you at. <laughs> yes, uh, we are here to celebrate our own. The celebrant is a member, George Akume, CON, KSJI, MDA, most distinguished alumnus. He is a member of our board of trustees. And he is a man of peace. And that's why we've come here to talk about that. And in doing so, I will quickly reference the chairman who said Senator George Akume has given Nigeria peace. There's no doubt about that. All, and since all politics is local, he has also given Benue State peace. The chairman went ahead to say that during his eight-year term with new peace in Benue State. No, we are all living witnesses to that. We wouldn't doubt that. And he has continued to stand for peace. Whatever our divisions, whatever our diversity, he is preaching peace and tolerance and patience. Even his recent remarks, those of you who have been following either social media or whatever, is always for peace tolerance, and so on. I watched a, a, a video clip he just came in when he came in for this program. I could see the love with which he, he, he showed. Immediately he stepped out from the aircraft and said, I love Ben Wested. That is a statement of peace. His service, his sacrifices, not just for Ben Wested, but for the nation. So if I must go back to the national and international dimension, we want to state, I want to state, well, let me begin with the academia before I go to the national dimension of its peace element. I am ASU. And we know what the SGF has just done to us. Those of us who are secretaries of organizations, not to talk of secretary of the federal government of Nigeria, you know what it means when the president directs the secretary and perhaps the secretary forgets to write a memo, an agenda. What, what am I referring to? Not a fortnight or so ago, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu announced the removal of the universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education from IPPIS. There is peace in the Nigerian university system. And if the, uh, the if the SGF had not done that, if she he had forgotten, if he had not been so dutiful, I I wonder whether the Federal Executive Council would have approved that. The best they can say, but why didn't you bring it? And he can, but because he prepared the agenda, 
he did the engine room and whatever. That's why we're all celebrating. I watched the film that the president, when he was signing, that I was happy. So we are happy as ASU. So I thank the SGF so much. Now, in terms of the men, <coughs> the peaceful men, you know that the party which is in control now also seeks for peace. We do know that his office, the office of the Secretary of the Government, also has the, the new partnership, that is NEPAD, New Partnership for African Development. It, over, it oversees foreign relations between us and other African nations. And Africa is the centerpiece of our foreign policy. And we do know that his control of that office has tried to bring about peace, not only in Nigeria, but also within the sub-region. It was Kofi Annan during the Gulf War who mentioned that sometimes it's better to threaten than to act. If you remember very well the developments in Chad and other military enclaves, the government had threatened that it would go to work if the military junta did not go uh, back, backslide. And we can begin to see some peace even at that international level. His global impact as a peacemaker is not only contained in his travels, it is also in the activities of that office as an engine room of government. So we, we do believe that he's truly a man of peace. And it's not only impacting Benue, it's not only impacting Nigeria, <clears throat> but it's also impacting the international community. That is why the APC, we believe in peace and unity as its major decision. So we will just round up these things and being warned uh, uh, what we need to, what, what the APC as a party and the celebra celebrant there, who, because the mention was made of from ACN to APC, we have always sought for peace and unity. It is very much appropriate in their constitution. It is very much appropriate to Nigerian situation. We must join hands with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to work towards the restoration of peace in our country and in general, and Benue State in particular. It is sometimes stated that there can be no development without peace. And so we, 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 but the worst case scenario could be where there is injustice. So, and it is only justice that brings about peace. So as we are here celebrating our revered elder statesman, a patriot to the core, we want that to also enjoy each and every one of us that we should continue to abide with the tenets of peace and progress so that we'll be able to take our country to a greater pedestal. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Professor Sawa Gabriel Yitio, who spoke on the George Akume, a man of peace with local and global impact. We well, thank you very kindly. Your Excellencies, Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a break very quickly to state here that uh, the overall planner, the man who is in charge of everything you're seeing here and what you're going to be seeing tomorrow, that's the chairman of the Central Planning Committee, the former permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education and the executive chairman of the OFTET Fund. Architect Sonny Echona has been here for a while, sir. We'd like to thank you for what you have put together we appreciate you. A round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. And very quickly, let me break the protocol to inform you that Senator Yusuf Albuquer Yusuf uh, from Taraba is here with us. We have Senator Engineer Kabir Abdullahi Barkia from Katsina. We'd like to welcome you. Abdullahi Aliu Katsina, the National Secretary of the APC Stakeholders Forum. We'd like to welcome you very warmly to this occasion. And of course, the senior legislative aide to the Senate President, Honorable Umar Hassan Farouk. Uh, We're glad you could make it to this occasion. Thank you very much. Of course, my brother, Matthias Buen, has been here for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward now, I'd like to advise all our paper presenters, all protocols have been established by the Masters of Ceremonies. The one minute you're taking to establish the protocol, you would have used it to present two pages. 
So please, let's just go straight to the point. You have been forgiven for every breach of protocol. I'm taking responsibility for that. So put your hands together for me. I have tried. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly move on now. As we bring in a man who is going to be speaking on Nigerian leadership recruitment in the image of George Akume, seeking the hole from the units. Let's bring now to the microphone a professor of philosophy with specialization in philosophy of science, uh, epistemology, and philosophy of language from the Department of Philosophy, Benway State University. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Aloy Ihua. Put your hands together for him. Before you speak, the SGF has directed me to recognize uh, Senator uh, Na Nazif and, of course, Senator uh, Goda. Gada, I, I beg your pardon. We'd like to welcome you very warmly. The, 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 the SGF recognizes you very warmly. Thank you for coming in, please. God bless you. So you have five minutes, and by the message of God, six. Far back in 2023, I had the opportunity to make a presentation on the 60th birthday of the celebrant. That day, I used the Mandela quip, and I'm going to repeat it here, so that we can begin as a background to the discussion. Quote, you know I am not very happy with Nigeria. I have made that very clear on many occasions. Nigeria stood by us more than any nation in, in, in the world. But to let your people, your, yourselves down, and Africa, and the black nation. Your leaders have no respect for their people. They believe that their personal interests are the interest of the people. They take people's resources and turn them into their personal wealth. There is a level of poverty in Nigeria that is unacceptable. I cannot understand why Nigerians are not angrier than they are. What do young Nigerians think about their leaders? and their country, and Africa. Do they teach them history? Do you have lessons on how your past leaders stood by us and gave us large amounts of money? You know I hear from Angolans, Mozambicans, Zimbabweans, how your people open their hearts and their homes to them. I was in prison then, but we knew how your leaders punished Western companies who supported apartheid. What about the corruption and crimes? Your elections are like wars. Now, we hear that you cannot, you cannot be a president in Nigeria unless you are a Muslim or a Christian. Some people tell me your country may break. Please, don't let it happen. That is the Mandela quip. And that is the subject of our discussion. From this quip, we can identify several problems of Nigeria. And these problems include leadership problem. We have the youth problem. We have also the poverty problem. We have also the followership problem. We have electoral problems. And then we have religious problems. Today, we are just going to look at just one of those wrongs. And that is leadership recruitment. Now, let us take our minds back to what I may call the leadership, history, leadership crisis in history in Africa. We must understand that when Europeans, whom some of us call our, our colonial masters, came into Nigeria, the biggest problem they made, they, 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 they made was to isolate people who were backward in Nigeria. And our people themselves were only sending children of their second wives. Be, there are children who were cantacaras, who were criminals, and those were the people who went to school. And when the Europeans left, these people became inheritors of the Nigerian leadership. And that became the problem of our, Niger, our, our, our country. Today, we discover that in Nigeria, for you to be a leader, you must either become, you must either be a Muslim or a Christian, 
or from a thief in, a, in, in, in Benway State or Idoma. So, the question now is, why are we where we are today? We have discovered, and it is very clear to us, that the problem of Nigerian leadership, therefore, is a carryover from the colonial masters. And it is very clear to us, therefore, that within Nigeria, there were local trainings for our leaders. And that is where the background from we, where our celebrant came from. And here, we are trying to look at the fact that our leader is somebody who was trained by the local TIF environment. And the local TIF environment clearly defines leadership processes. And in this context, the distinguished senator developed what we may call his leadership philosophy. And what is that leadership philosophy? That leadership philosophy is what I have coined as Ayatutuism. Now, what is Ayatutuism? Ayatutu from the thief, Aya, the verb, I eat or eat. Tutu, that is something that is hot or warm. So we are locating that the distinguished Senator Akuma, who was trained in the local leadership processes, was a man who was identified within the thief environment and who was trained within this leadership philosophy. And it is sourced by what we call the metaphysics of the TIF society. And what is that metaphysics? The metaphysical foundation of leadership in TIF is what we also derive from Yanawangban. Yanawangban that has been corrupted by some academics as chop give your brother is not the issue. Yanawangban is what we call democratic humanism, in which case it is the metaphysical foundation of leadership. Within the TIF environment, and within the process, the process of marriage, which was exchange marriage, you were supposed to give your daughter to your brother who does not have daughters. And if you refuse to give him, it means that he will be plotting against you. In the context of this, that is why you have political crisis all over Nigeria. It is about demo democracy of infrastructure. People who are refusing to share their earnings or whatever they have with their brothers. That is what our distinguished senator has distinguished himself within the political system of the two people. In this regard, we will discover that for the senator, therefore, for him, this, as I have said from the background, this is the background from which we have leaders in Nigeria who are not serving the purpose or the interest of the people. But against that, we are saying therefore that the distinguished senator based on his leadership philosophy of Ayatutuism, which I also describe here as Nawangban, that is democratic humanism of sharing whatever he has with people, has made him the leader of the people. You may ask, the Biapalo talks are there. Akume brought in Suswam. Everybody says that. And he gave Lawani as his deputy. Akume brought in Otom and gave uh, 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 Engineer uh, Obonu as his deputy. Akume brought in Aliyah and brought Sam Ode as his deputy. Those are Biapalo talks. The reality of the matter and the question outside now is why has Akume played all these roles of not only bringing a governor but bringing also a deputy? It is on the basis of his leadership philosophy, which I call a Yatutuism, that he has been able to manage the diversities. Now, in conclusion, in conclusion, I must say, quoting Socrates, and this is an injunction, leadership is not about you going to beg at the doors of your so-called godfathers. It is about the godfathers isolating you, going after you, getting you to become a leader and the issues are very clear do people who are sick do the medical doctors go to seek them to cure them they do not the sick people go to the medical doctors and therefore in conclusion i would say socrates said and i am going to quote here tell them it is true that the best which is philosophers 
are useless to the multitude. However, this is not because something is wrong with those who love wisdom, but because people do not know what to do with them. It would be unnatural for the captains to plead to the sailors to be put in the command or for the wise people to go and beg at the doors of Godfathers. The issue in question here is very clear, therefore, that the distinguished senator goes out as a wise person, as a medical doctor who sits in his place, as somebody who is, who is qualified to be a leader. He goes out to seek that leader and brings him forward. That is why he brought Suswam. That is why he brought Otum. That is why now he has brought Governor Alia to be the governor. It is only a wise person. It is only a knowledgeable person who can do that. That goes for the distinguished senator, George Akume. And we can say to God be the glory. Thank you. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I think the summary he said, philosophers are useless. I mean, sorry. In the words of, uh, is it Socrates? Yes, please. Yes, Socrates. But he will give another word. He said, ayatu, ayatu is, ayatu is, yes. Yeah, that's a new one. Okay. Only a philosopher can bring that out. That was presented yeah. with a lot of passion. We could feel him. Um, it's really very interesting to listen to him. We can actually afford to go the entire day. But for want of time, we have to stop you, sir. And then we're moving. Still in the spirit of trying to uh, manage time, we're moving on to the next stage of the program, which is the discussion segment. Um, please, I'd like to appeal to the speakers that we have exactly three minutes. Please do not give us the burden of having to, you know, uh, remind you of the time. It's three minutes for the discussion segment. And I'd like to start... Okay, I'd like to also... Um, appeal to you that it's for want of space that you're sitting where you are, but please, um, I'll be invite, inviting you respectfully to the podium for your uh, discussion segment. I'd like to um, very respectfully invite the resident electoral commissioner, independent national electoral commission, Ben I'm referring to Professor Sam Egu. A round of applause for Professor Egu. That you have three minutes Thank you. Well, because of uh, the need for economy of time, I have been advised to adopt the protocol already comprehensively established. But let me say the first thing I need to say, and that is that I'm constrained because I don't have the liberty to speak like the previous speakers or those who presented the lead papers precisely because I, ca I can only limit myself to what is academic in all the presentations, but not beyond that. On a personal note, I think it's important that we take seriously the question of Nigerians turning 70. Um, I followed the Nigerian political economy. In the 1970s, life expectancy was 72. Then came in the structural adjustment program. And life expectancy became 42. In recent time, I'm told it's climbing to 50. But for somebody to turn 70, I think we should, in solidarity, celebrate him. Now, there's a discussion here today about diversity and the need to manage diversity. 
I want to single out that particular aspect of presentation and speak to it. Now, I'm a political scientist by training, and we read every day about what we call the national question in Nigeria, the question of managing diverse ethnic, religious, and cultural communities in such a way that they can transfer their loyalty from the primordial level you know, to the level of, to the ecumenical level of the states, where they all associate themselves with, with one particular national identity. That is so difficult in Nigeria. It's difficult in Nigeria for two reasons. <laughs> one of them is that we became a nation under colonial rule. And that was possible because the British had to conquer diverse ethnic and religious communities. But they didn't do just that. They were not interested in these diverse communities to have a sense of oneness. Deliberately, the British created ethnicities out of innocent, ignorant people who didn't know about ethnicity. So it's one of my professors who told me that Nigerians came out of colonial rule with Yoruba identity. At the time colonialism started, there was no awareness about a pan-Yoruba identity. Same thing with pan-Ibo identity. And you can go on and on and mention them. They were not interested. But the truth of the matter is that those who took over after independence found ethnicity, religion, as very effective technology of power, mobilizing communities along those lines, because it's, it's very cheap and it can easily give votes. But the consequence of that is what we are seeing today. Too many levels of identities, too many levels of loyalties. In fact, you get to a particular place. I've worked in the University of Jaws for over 30 years, and then all of a sudden, they said, oh, these are non-indigenous. You move to a particular local government, you need a certificate of indigeneity to prove that you can have access to certain you know, opportunities. And we can't continue like this, because as the speaker himself said, we have evidence to prove that diversity is not a liability if we effectively cultivate it. And what is very striking to me is that the Nigerian ruling elite have gone ahead of their African counterparts in recognizing the importance of managing diversity. And if you look at our public laws, whether it is a constitution, whether it is a federal character principle, whether it is a federal character commission, we are sensitive to the implications of this. And I think that the SGF who is seated here today is in the position to contribute to the promotion of diversity because of the sensitive position he occupies. And what the literature is saying is that if you want to promote unity and cohesion, you don't need to behave as if you are flying to the moon. All you need to do is to promote multiculturalism, is to promote fairness, is to promote justice. And we can do this in the way in which we make appointments and in the way in which we have symbolic representation in the public space. If he can deliver on this, I think it is something that we need to task him to do so. In that way, he will write himself into history. I thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sam Egu. You did justice with your three minutes, and I'm sure that the next speaker is going to do even better. Thank you very much. So I'm inviting now the Executive Secretary National Lottery Trust Fund Abuja. I'm referring to Dr. Bello Megeri. Please, a round of applause for him as he makes his way to the podium. Thank you, sir. Three minutes. Mr. Chairman, uh, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Let me start by congratulating our celebrant for attaining this golden year of 70. Congratulations, sir. Attaining this age of 70 comes 
with a lot of challenges and wisdom. I have worked very closely with my principal in the last five to six years, and I can attest to this August gathering that is a man of vision. He's a man that has lived and toiled for this great nation, Nigeria. In the last four decades, Senator Dr. George Akume has traversed the length and breadth of this country. We know him to be a detribalized Nigerian. We have worked with him very closely. I'm coming from the far northern part of this country, the northeast, Gombe State. In all these years that we've been together, he has remained a father figure to us. He has been a leader in the institutions that we've served. And of course, we continue to pray for his, for his life and for the benefit of having his wisdom and vision in driving the current renewed hope agenda of this administration. If God continues to preserve him, to elongate his life, we are certain to witness a lot of legacies in the present office that he's occupying. Let me single out uh, one of the speakers who made mention about his philosophy of leadership recruitment. It is essential because Moving this country forward requires a man of vision, a man of capacity, a man that is detribalized, a man that has seen it all from the political side and from the bureaucracy. So continue to celebrate him. May God continue to preserve you, sir. May God continue to uplift this regime and this government to see to the delivery of all the goals that has been enunciated in the Renewed Hope Agenda of the administration. So on this note, I would like to thank uh, the MC for giving me this little time uh, to reflect on what has been said and discussed in this forum going forward and to wish all our members of the high table and in, in, indeed the distinguished guest joining Messi back to their respective destination. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love the call to action by Dr. Megeri. We should continue to celebrate the SGF and that will continue to do until you attain the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Our last but certainly not the least speaker is uh, Chief Senator Dr. Jacob Tiligado, CON. Sir, um, as you make your way here, I'd like to appeal to you that you have three minutes. The SGF is already scheduled for another visit, and so we'd not like to keep him here longer than we have. So three minutes, sir. The chairman of the occasion, it is very disrespectful to call me and without speaking, restrict me. Don't do that next time. I'm an elder statesman. And when I speak, it's serious. Probably in this hall, I'm the oldest person. We've come here for a very simple function. That function is about someone who today is becoming the beacon of hope. He is becoming the star upon which we are all gazing for the future 
of not only Benue, not only North Central, but the country in general. That person is no other person than distinguished Senator George Akume, C-O-N. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been told I'm Senator Tiligado. I am 79 years old. I know a leader. I know a good guy. I know a detropolized person. I know a Christian. I know someone with a good heart. When I see one, George Akume is that person. At my age, and little attainment in life, being a second Republic senator of this country, and a former presidential candidate up under option A4, I cannot be following someone that I am not sure footed about. I am following George Akume because I have seen something that will happen, something very positive that some of you may not see now. There is something in this man. I am urging Nigerians to give him a chance. His combination with Ashwadi, Tinubu would bring the solution that Nigerians have been yearning for over the past years. They will run this country well. They will run this country profitably. They will bring dividends of democracy to this country. And they will reach out for the poor. And they will leave a permanent address of good, serene, faultless leadership, crystal clear honesty, and accountability. That is George Akume for you. Akume has gone beyond Benue. I want to seize this opportunity for those of you saying Akume is this or the governor is that. He's gone beyond that. You cannot be a PhD holder and come and be doing things about Bachelor of Science. Akume is a PhD holder. Why are you bringing Bachelor of Science to him? Akume is a professor emeritus in the game of politics. He's gone. He's beyond this a gazelle. He's gone. Let us support him. I will spend the rest of my life supporting Akume until he... <laughs> until he attains that position that all of us will tap from. I have no shame in doing it. And I want to announce here that when he zoned the position of governorship to my zone, I held on to him very tightly. And it's through that assistance, that help, that push, that catalytic reaction in the chemical action of the polity that I produced a governor. I am too old not to tell the truth. I have nothing to fear. I have lived a good life. In 11 years, I'll be 90. I must live legacies of truth. Akuma is a good man. He's selfless. And he's not anyone that anybody can accuse of undoing what he did. Akuma finally we become the Sedona of Sokoto. Currently, currently, Akume is the J.S. Tucker. God brought Akume to complete the work that J.S. Tucker started many years ago that God cut his life short. After several years, God brought Akume, go ye and complete the work that your senior brother, J.S. Tucker, started. It's not by accident. 
It is ordained by God and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Like him or not, his destination is assured. I'm very intelligent enough to advise my people, to move my people, let us be part of this success story that is waiting to happen in this country. Thank you. Distinguished Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Jagedo, we appreciate you for your kind words. God will keep you until you're 90. God will keep you till you're 95. God will keep you till you're 100 in Jesus' name. And you'll still be stronger than yesterday. Thank you very much for coming in. For the sake of time, or the lack of it, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to take some goodwill messages. And for goodwill messages, please, we're going to strictly regulate it. Uh, everyone who is here is uh, very, very important. And we must ensure that everyone gets a time to speak, but within the confined minutes that we have as well. Before I do that, I'd like to invite the chairman of the Central Planning Committee, who himself has the microphone to give us orders on what should happen here. The former permanent secretary, Minister of Education, the executive secretary of TED Fund, architect Sonny Echano. A round of applause for him as he takes the mic. Good to see you. The Chairman of the Occasion, my Chair, Your Excellencies, very special invited guests. On behalf of the celebrant, his wife, the Governor, and the peace loving and hospitable people of Benway State. I want to welcome all our invited guests to this gathering in this season of gratitude. Only yesterday, all across the land and in all of Christendom, we celebrated the gift of Christ and the salvation that it brings. Today, and indeed to continue tomorrow, we shall be celebrating the gift of the Son, George Akume, to Benue, to North Central, to Nigeria. And I want to start my message of gratitude by expressing our deep appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for bringing honor to the North Central Zone that for the first time in the history of this country, we have produced the secretary to the government, the engine room of his administration. And he made a very informed choice of a man that has been described variously here today, and I stand to attest to that a very detribalized Nigerian, a man whose social network cuts across the length and breadth and every cranny of this country, a man whom I had the very singular privilege of being associated with since 1974, almost 50 years ago, when he was my teacher at St. Murumba's College in Jos. And for that 50, those 50, nearly 50 years, we have maintained this relationship. This is a special gift that he has. He can count literally millions of people he relates to directly in this country from all parts of the country. And he maintains relationships. He is empathetic. He always looks down to the downtrodden, the vulnerable, those in need. He has a very large heart. For want of time, I want to pray to the Almighty to give him more years as he continues to serve our country. I urge each and every one of us from home and without to support him, 
to carry out God's work that he has given him to bring it to a justifiable end. I thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you, my chairman. The good Lord bless you. Very quickly, I'd like to invite the Vice Chancellor of the Benway State University. Uh, he is our host in this place. This is building in which we are seated. We'd like to ask uh, Professor Joseph Tobirapu to use one minute to greet all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, our Chairman, our Chief Celebrant, His Excellency. Um, I will say this, sir. Some people read history. Some people write history. Others make history. You have made history, and you will continue to make history. Where we are seated is where you made positive history. This environment is the environment of your effort. And today, many students, I'm not sure even you ever thought that something like this will happen in your name here. But it is happening, and it shall happen again. Congratulations on behalf of members of this community, this university. We'd like to congratulate you and pray with you and the entire family that we are behind you. Nigeria is behind you. Benue is behind you. We shall continue to be behind you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tuyarapu. We appreciate you. Two more people are going to speak, and then His Excellency will come up. I'd like to invite uh, the Ochago Kidoma. Uh, the former Deputy Governor of Benue State and Elder Statesman, uh, Chief Stephen Lawani, OFR. Uh, very quickly, he is a man of very few words. He has never spoken for more than two minutes before. So put your hands together for him as he comes forward, ladies and gentlemen. I think today I will speak more than two minutes. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I knew the, ch the celebrant, Senator George Akuma, before he became governor of Benue State. Indeed, we were friends and have been friends. No wonder. He had no problem throwing his support for me to be Deputy Governor of Benue State. As Governor, he did not just leave a legacy of good governance, he distinguished himself as a compassionate and grassroots leader who identified with people from every part of the state. He attended events burials, thanksgiving, etc., all over the state. He endeared himself to the people of Benue State with his unusual style of governance. And that made it easy for him to leave his party, the PDP then, float an unknown, an unknown party and win elections under that platform. As a minister, though, though handicapped by not having the requisite portfolio that will allow him to replicate his leadership qualities and drive home the much needed dividend of democracy, he did his best and served with excellence and equanimity. Benway people are now happy that as secretary to governments of the Federation, he now has a platform that will allow the country to benefit from his rich experience. I must also add that there is no doubt that before the end of his term as SGF, Nigerians and indeed Bene people will benefit overwhelmingly from his people-oriented leadership style. A few days ago, I, w I was with some friends. Discussing an article on, in Forbes magazine where they listed mil billionaires in the world. 
And when we turn to Nigeria, eventually turn to Benue State, I was like, very excited when someone said, and I agreed, that Akume is the richest person in Benue State. Before you say what? Riches here is not in money, not in terms of uh, bank deposit, but in terms of followership by people. I think you will agree with me that he's the most followed and most supported individual in Bermuda State. I encourage you to continue. And to the many of you who have come from far and near, may God bless you as you go back to your station. Thank you. A round of applause for the former Deputy Governor, De Uchagukidoma, uh, His Excellency Stephen Lawani. Sir, just to remind you that I'm wearing white abada together with you. I think that's God's ordination. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to quickly bring to the microphone the member of the class of 99, when His Excellency Governor George Akume was Governor of Benue State, he was the Governor of uh, Jigawa State. I'd like to welcome to the mic Senator Dr. Ibrahim Samaru Turaki. Put your hands together for him. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> I think all protocol of love. Uh, George, Chief Dr. George Akumi had always amazed all of us. And I remembered when there was crisis in Plato and uh, the former deputy general of Plato is here. Uh, together with him and Northern Government tried to bring peace. So what George represents and our dear friend who is more, I don't know, persistent, uh, Dr. Kajim Imam, uh, they had gone through a lot. I remember in the year 2000, in, uh, 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 in, in the, when we went, when Atiku Abakar was to be made, uh, given t title, there was shooting, there was so many things. So and I'm happy my senior brother has spoken about Jack Tiligadu. George is above the politics. He started from Benue. But he now represents Nigeria. He represents <laughs> northern Nigeria. He also represents all of us. So I don't want George to be dragged. Uh, uh, somebody say he supports this, and you rightly said it. Uh, he's professor. We don't talk to your primary school. But what I want to add, uh, in the year 358 BC, there was a problem. For 300 years or 800, there was a fight in China with seven countries. So it's the poorest was the state of Qin. So there's a philosopher called Shangyang. Shangyang was brought in and he, he brought reforms in China. Uh, he was the, uh, and together, after 200, 221 BC, China became a country and is still a country, second largest economy. Our budget this year was $35 billion, which means every Nigerian has $175 or half a dollar a day, we cannot be called giant of Africa. Uh, 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 Egypt had 200 billion, South Africa 120 billion. So we are the poorest of the poor. For us to reach there, our biggest problem, I don't agree with, our, uh, with our, I'm a mathematician and I believe in results, not in theories. Uh, the biggest problem we have today is to reduce our Gini coefficient, make everybody rich. Uh, sigma in mathematics means sum total. Uh, a German is here from Liad Beneath. So what we need is for every Nigerian to go into prosperity. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu had already said he's bringing prosperity. So there was a lisi for the first emperor of China 
We hope George Akume would be the Shangyang, the Lisi, or the Republic paper that were done for uh, George Washington that made America the strongest. Uh, and that was what brought Benja uh, Benjamin Franklin and others. So for Nigeria to be that, we need a budget not of 35 billion, but 700 billion minimum for the next 10 years. Uh, we cannot reach there if small, small communities are fighting. We are not as diverse as India, which has 10 times our population and also has more, more tribes than we have. Uh, so we, we, all societies evolve during conquest. So the British Empire or Nigeria or the Mongol Empire or Nigeria evolved. Even the Tiv nation, some Tiv conquered others, I'm sure, but they didn't conquer the Jukuns, I'm sure. So, so I think what we need is for us to work together, support George Akumi to be that philosopher, that person who might even succeed Bola Ahmed Tinumbu after he has finished his eight years term. For, for, us, for us to do that, we need to diversify our economy. And I hope, we sincerely hope, we started this together in 1999. Today, the Secretary to the Government and the President are our class. The, speak, the Senate President is also a former governor. So, so I hope our prayer for all of us, including Senator and all of us who are here, is to have a greater country that in the next 15 years will be just bigger than even Indonesia in an in economy like Brazil also. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the former governor. Uh, he is a mathematician. I had a career over in maths. And so I will ask uh, at the end of the day to be explained in detail the calculations he brought forward there. Well, very quickly, before I invite the Deputy Governor, I'd like to invite an elder statesman and uh, APC Stakeholders Chairman in Benue State, Uvisi, Simon Shango, Unde um, Lumoya, uh, please, just one minute. Uh, very, just one minute, very quickly. This is the permission of the Chairman uh, of the occasion. Um, just within one minute, if you will, do that quickly. Meanwhile, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, will be getting ready as soon as uh, Simon Shango is done, obviously Simon Shango is done, uh, the Deputy Governor will speak. Um, I want to just plead with the elder statesman, if you will. Uh, he is coming forward. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes forward. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Arts can sue. Arts can sue. Arts Council, thank you. Thank you. The Arts Council has already taken 10 minutes out of uh, one minute out of his time. So he will speak for only one minute. Uh, a round of applause for the elder. Please, just one minute, please, um, right here. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. I stand by the existing protocols that have been warned by the civil, uh, MC. I find it difficult to say anything as I stand here because I'm speaking about my younger brother, my leader, and a man who means everything to me. I was there when he was born. I was there when he started primary school. I was there when he left school. I was there when he started politics. I am there with him now that he's serving the, the, the country and in fact the whole lot of Africa. I can testify that he's doing very well. At 70, he's only beginning life because I am far older than that. My friend Jacob Chilegado said he was the oldest. I think he has to have a think again. 
I think my problem is that I had eye surgery and they thought um, I did not see him when he was standing there. <laughs> I think we are the same age or if I'm not older. Uh, let me tell you that my younger brother is a man that is difficult to describe. Everybody has said how generous he is, how humble he is, how hardworking he is. I can bear testimony about him, particularly from our village, because all politics is, is uh, local. He has brought his knowledge, his intellect, his positions to bear on our village, Wanune. And I believe all of you will be there tomorrow to see it. I want to thank you very much for honoring him. I want to thank you for coming from different parts of the country and from different parts of the world to be here today. May God bless you. May God carry you back safely. And at 70, our brother, our mentor, our leader has no problem in Benue State. I wrote to him at 70, I said, there will be detractors, but I asked him to go refer to Jimmy Cliff's song that the harder they come, the harder they fall. And he will continue on and on and on and conquer. May God keep him well for us. Amen. A round of applause for the elder statesman. The man who is one day or one hour or one minute older than Jagedo, we're not sure uh, which one comes first. But I think Jagedo will disagree with that. Uh, <laughs> Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, moving on now, I'd like to bring on a humble man, the former Minister of, the St Minister of State of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Deputy Governor of Benue State, I'd like to, with all sense of respect, invite Dr. Barista Sam Ode, MNI. Put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman of this very important occasion, a son of Benue our leader and our friend, Kashim Ibrahim Imam C.O.N. Another citizen of Benue in Plateau, Dem Paulin Talen OFR, who is the vice chair of this occasion. Our leader, the celebrant for whom we are gathered here this afternoon. Senator Dr. George Akume, Secretary to the Government of the Federation of Nigeria. His wife, the pillar that is behind this strong man, member of the House of Representatives representing Boko Taka Federal Constituency, Chief Mrs. Regina Akume, JP. National Assembly members, and they are here in their numbers, Nazif Suleiman, Joel Danlami Ikeni, and the rest of them, Senator Taito Zam, members of the House of Reps, I can see Dixon Taki, Representative Ugo, and others, Chief Judge of Benue State, Maurice Ikpambese, President of the customary court of appeal, who is also here with us, former governors, especially the set of 99, represented here by Samino Turaki, CON, former deputy governors, 
Chief Stephen Lawani, CON, Sala Sagara, former Deputy Governor of Nasarawa State, members of the Diplomatic Corps, traditional rulers, members of the University of Ibadan alumni who are here, architect Sonny Echono of Ted Fund, Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our own Joseph Utsev, very distinguished Nigerians here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to take a speech on behalf of the Reverend Father Dr. Heisen Diomemalia, whom I have the honor to serve as Deputy Governor. He ought to have been here, but he has just arrived in Lagos for a dinner with Mr. President. Before going to Lagos, he had gone to clear with the celebrant. I take the speech. My pride knows no bounds today as I join thousands of people to welcome home a political colossus, a democratic patriarch, and a man whom, upon the birthing of the Fourth Republic in Nigeria, laid the foundation for successive leadership in our dear state of Benue. We are gathered here today not merely to acknowledge the passage of time, but to celebrate a leader, the state pillar of our great party, a man who has over the years risen steadily from being a political creation to a creator in our own political landscape. After very careful thoughts by my administration and how best to honor our leader, Senator Dr. George Akume, CON, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, on his 70th birthday anniversary, we decided to put together this colloquium slash symposium as part of the activities to mark his homecoming. The aim is also to use the aim is also to use this opportunity to foster discussions on good governance and, of course, national cohesion. As a matter of fact, it is the determination of my administration that this colloquium and symposium comes, becomes an annual ritual in honor of a man that is arguably the cradle of the Fourth Republic. May I, on behalf of all sons and daughters of Benway, use this platform to re-echo our profound gratitude to Senator, to, sorry, to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, for finding Senator Dr. George Akume worthy of service to our fatherland in the capacity of Secretary to Government of the Federation. We also thank Mr. President for several other notable leadership positions which time will not permit me to outline here. Benue origin, Benue sons and daughters of deep diverse background have been appointed to contribute their quota towards national development. This is a clear demonstration that indeed Benue is seriously being considered in the scheme of things in our nation, Nigeria. I want to specifically commend Senator George Akume for ensuring that since the inception of the Fourth Republic, you have not only developed a whole generation of persons who have grown to become in various respect leaders, but for also allowing that group of people to, be, to develop ideas to even contradict and controvert yours many times. And indeed, many times you either gave in to those ideas or simply walked away without truncating them all together for good. While some may regard that as foolishness or a weakness, I personally regard it as a greatest virtue of, true, of a true Democrat who is open-minded and flexible in the marketplace of ideas. In Nigeria, only few individuals dedicate their political missions to the advancement of common good. Among these rare individuals stands the retired permanent secretary, a two-term governor of Benue State, 
a three-term senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a former honorable minister for special duties and and presently secretary to government of the Federation. For over two decades, Senator Akume has exemplified both in rhetorics and in action a steadfast commitment to social compassion and welfare advocacy. This political philosophy, deeply entrenched in the essence of well-being and a profound reverence for human dignity, has served as a guiding principle through his tenure in pub throughout his tenure in public service, from his days as permanent secretary in Benue State down to date when he's secretary of government of the Federation. His enduring commitment to these ideals underscores the uncompromising belief in politics that, is, that places the welfare and dignity of every individual at the forefront. It is this principled approach that shapes his legacy, marking him as a leader dedicated to the enhancement of society. For instance, within this short period of your current appointment, which I consider to be very strategic, you have played a very pivotal role in the ratification of several federal government projects and intervention programs here in our state. For instance, the approval of Mr. President for the establishment of the Renewed Hope Shelter Program pilot scheme in the state aimed at relocating our internally displaced persons back to their ancestral homes was partly possible through your instrumentation. This is not to mention several other intervention programs ranging from provision of relief materials to flood victims in the state to the approval of funds for palliatives to cushion the effect of the fuel subsidy removal. With particular regards to palliatives, may I respectfully inform you that my administration decided to use some of the funds to cushion the effects through the procurement of 100 buses, which have already been handed over to the state-owned Benway Links Transport Company, so as to ease the movement of people across the state at the most affordable rates possible. As I speak, Benway commuters are already all smiles, thanks to the transportation palliatives. More so, we have flagged off the distribution of grains and food items as, as additional palliatives to households across the 276 council wards of Benway State. Our esteemed leader, it may interest you to know that now that politicking is over, my administration has buckled up and began to work with a view to bringing forth dividends of democracy to the people with whom we are bound by a social contract. Apart from boosting agriculture, agricultural activities across the state through the timely provision of fertilizers to farmers at subsidized rates, we have also begun the construction of 16 strategic routes within Makodi Metropolis with plans to extend same in due course to other parts of the state and especially the rural areas. Furthermore, while ensuring prompt payment of workers and pensioners emoluments as and when due, we are also currently in talks with a number of companies and private organizations with a view to resuscitating all the moribund industries across the state as well as building new ones to boost socioeconomic growth. The health sector is also a pri priority as we have already en engendered several reforms. Apart appointments and rehabilitation, opening of some public health facilities and centers across the state, including the Muhammad Buhari Mother and Child Hospital, among others. As I speak, our attention is being shifted to the Benue State University Teaching Hospital. Of course, this is one of your legacies for the people of Benue State and indeed Nigeria. Radi Radical reforms are already on their way to deliver on our promise 
of the provision of adequate and affordable health care services. The Light Up Makodi Street Lights project is ongoing. In addition, our administration, in collaboration with Microsoft, has already sponsored 10,000 youths who are undergoing ICT-related trainings. Furthermore, we are focused on attracting new investment to the state. Our administration is making a case for to be considered for 30% derivative given to states with mineral deposits from the Federation account. By this, we are optimistic that, again, you will use your good office to help drive this initiative. In the area of security, collaborations with various security agencies and formations in the states have been epic, all geared towards ensuring lasting peace and tranquility. Various stakeholders as well as civil society societies have also been very cooperative in the business of peace and security. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, sir, we are doing so much already that time wouldn't permit me to lay all out here for you to see. And so much still needs to be done, which we are ready and equal to the task. Besides, this is the reason we, we signed up for this administration's journey. Before I conclude, I want to unambiguously debunk the circulating rumors of discord between the Secretary of the Government of the Federation and myself. There is no basis for such speculation. This exists solely in the imaginative realm of opportunists, instigators of turmoil, and merchants of mischief who thrive on chaos. The said fracas is only a figment of the imagination crafted by those who seek to profit from such crisis. We will not allow this to prevail. Meanwhile, for pockets of disenchanted members of our party here in the state, we are already in talks to address various areas of discontent. However, while we try to do so, we shall ensure that the will of the masses who voted us into office prevails. This is because we are determined not to distort the, the organic relationship between the people and our government. I therefore enjoin each and every one of us to dismiss such baseless notions and focus on the shared commitments to truth, unity, progress that defines our collective journey. As the chief host of this triumphant homecoming of our leader, Senator Dr. George Akume, I heartily welcome you home on behalf of all Benin people, even as we congratulate you on, as you turn 70. We wish you a happy stay at home until you return to continue your good work with the top echelon of society. Long live Senator George Akume. Long live Benue States. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. A round of applause for this deputy governor who has stood in for the governor of Benue State. One, two. At this point in time, Your Excellencies, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite back to the microphone uh, our great chairman of this occasion, Dr. Kashim Ibrahim Imam, CON, uh, to make a few remarks before we continue. Please, just for me to announce that We'll wrap up in precisely 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. I want to thank everyone, most especially the speakers, uh, for all your very kind words, which I will say is very well deserved by the SGF. May I, at this stage, uh, before we call his birthday cake and sing a birthday song, may I invite him so that he will quickly make his remarks um, uh, let's all listen to him attentively for another five minutes. I also crave the uh, TV stations that are doing live coverage. Please bear with us at least till, till the end of the SGF's speech. You can go up there after when we are singing and cutting cake and dancing and so on. 
Thank you. Um, the celebrant, please. We crave your indulgence to come and address us. Thank you. And now the moment we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly put your hands together for the distinguished Senator Dr. George Akume. Sit down, please. Uh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, please. Stand down. Sit down, please. I decided deliberately to do that uh, to underscore the importance of colleagues and friends and associates in our political journey. We all need someone to lean on. If you <laughs> and if you need a friend, call me. Look at you sitting there. Time I need support, I call you, and you don't hesitate. You come to my aid. God bless you all. Thank you. The chairman of the occasion, my friend, my brother. What is he? <laughs> well, all protocol is up because we've spent quite some time here. My sister is sitting there uh, pulling talent with the chair lady of the occasion. So many of us uh, here can't uh, call you individually because of uh, them targeting. But I uh, welcome all of you. I thank you profoundly uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I want to thank in a very special way a friend who is here with us from another part of the world. I, I know and I want you to listen. I have a friend from the other part of the world. Professor Philippus is here. I don't want to say more than about, can you please stand up for recognition? Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will thank Almighty God for this wonderful occasion. At uh, 70, it's not uh, easy to attain that age in a typical African country. Uh, lifespan is rather short. I want to say, to God be the glory. I started this journey long ago with uh, classmates in primary school, through secondary school, uh, air levels, university, public service. Many of them are no more. May their souls rest in peace. It's uh, protected me. God has protected me where I am today. 
I want to thank in a very special way my friend, my boss, uh, His Excellency the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Commander in Chief, the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Bola Med Tinubu CFR, for finding me worthy to be part of his team as Secretary to the Government of the Federation. And I thank all of you for your prayers, for your support. And uh, as I continue to pray for all of us, particularly the President and uh, his family. I know it's not easy to be there, but it means well. He's done so much uh, since his inauguration on the 29th of May uh, this year. Now the policies uh, he's put in place and those that are going to be put in place again uh, first quarter of next year. But what has done, been done so far is going to make a profound difference in the lives of our people. I know we inherited something that was, was uh, uh, bad. Let me put it mildly. It was bad. And he was fully prepared to take on the challenge. I have had occasion to speak some of these policies. Uh, fiscal monetary. I've started yielding result. I want to, with a social investment programs and so on, I just want you to, and student programs, I want you to exercise a little patience. Uh, I know this government was elected for 48 months. We're done about uh, seven months. We still have a long way to go. And I assure you, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel and very soon too. I want to thank you for the support you gave us in the last elections. Without your support, we wouldn't have been able to assemble what we had at the national level and the state level. So you must always be uh, working with your heads uh, in the sky. Don't look back whatsoever. Your hard work. You work very hard. You tried, you sweated to make us what we are today. Don't behave like drenched chicken. And uh, we won't round and square. I appeal to you. I appeal to you. Be patient. I want to thank the president for, uh, sorry, the governor for putting in place uh, this colloquium. Uh, you listened to the speech by his deputy. Wonderful speech. And uh, just like what I said, on my arrival in Benway State after uh, seven months of absence, I state a love so much. I told you to pray, continue to pray for our governor. Your hard work put him in place. Continue to pray for, to pray for him. Don't be wasting the pray for him. Pray for him. These are try moments in politics. Politics. We have uh, rough times too. We have our <laughs> times of uh, glory. I know what I've gone through uh, since uh, my trajectory in this game uh, uh, spanning over how many years? No, 25 years. I countered so many things. Positive, negative. I've never looked back. I've never looked back at all. I can just look forward with hope, with optimism. Do it. God is always on our side. Please, appeal to you. Appeal to you. Tomorrow, we'll be at Wanune for the Thanksgiving service, marking my 70th birthday and my emergence as a secretary to the government of the Federation by the grace of uh, the President. Uh, his Excellency Bola, my team I am.
inviting once again all of you. Let's join together. Pray together. Not just for all of us in Gambia, for our country. For Nigeria. For no other country. It's the only country we have. No matter the difficulties, no matter the deficiencies, the future is bright. Renewed hope. Hope that tomorrow will be better than today. And I assure you, it is going to be better than today. Our nations are great. Nations are great because the citizenry believe that tomorrow will be better than today. What do we have today? Maybe rough and tough. But when you have a very difficult problem, you take time. And you don't solve it with kid gloves. Uh, you know, I, I tell people, the difficult problems cannot be solved. As instant as coffee. You know, coffee is written instant coffee. <laughs> you take it and when we were kids in the university, oh, sorry, in primary, secondary school, the universities, we used to take a lot of coffee. Instant coffee. You take it and what? You don't sleep. Instant coffee. But problems, are, when they are complex, you don't solve them through instant coffee. Solutions are not as instant as coffee. But certainly come. And they are coming. Solutions are coming. I want to thank all of you, particularly the speakers. Uh, remember, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Mochi, who, who had worked together, I see, also pointed out uh, with Father, uh, uh, Reverend Father uh, Moses, who also established this university. He he was a great man. Can you clap for him? Uh, he, he's no more. He did a lot within two years. But he reigned over Benue State. And um, today, this is one of the most respected uh, state universities in, in this country. And I'm happy that uh, the VC who is here also mentioned me. Actually, when I wanted to to build the faculty of medicine and the teaching hospital was advised that it was uh, too financially uh, on the high side for a set to to take on but I said that like, we have only one now and uh, we're going to do it and I'm happy that faculty of medicine is uh, there the teaching hospital is there and uh, we're producing doctors many of them are serving outside the country I wish they were serving locally but uh, that's it. Obviously, continue to support them to be of uh, service to our country and humanity. Yeah, uh, at least like capital. Capital knows no boundary. Skis go wherever they are needed. But we do our best to retain the best skis in this uh, country. Uh, Professor. Uh, Moti, I want to thank you so very much on touch on diversity. And this is uh, one of the popular themes of the uh, President of the government. She has mentioned this several days. Diversity, which is our source of strength. So managing diversity is one of his key areas of concern. And he has shown it in the appointments uh, he has so far made. Managing our diversity. Diversity is a source of strength when you manage it very well. Countries like America are also great because of diversity. The only thing is when you are in the U.S., you come from wherever you have to speak English. Diversity is a source of our strength. And our president recognizes this in a very special way. He was in Lagos as governor. He's uh, from Lagos. He, uh, was governor for eight years, he recruited people all over, including people outside of uh, Lagos State. And many of them in, are still in key positions in this country. 
unnecessary from Lagos State, including the former vice president of a country. Uh, the list is uh, endless. And again, we said to keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. And we did it in the past, not General Yakubu Gawan. And we all agreed, no matter what, we are one, we we'll continue to be one. In spite of our imperfections, even advanced countries have their own moments of uh, difficulties and uh, the sea, weather the storm. Nigeria will continue weather the storm. And you see the progress we have made in checking as some terrorism since this government came into power. Uh, President Nito, all politics is local. One is also very true that I know uh, uh, former Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives in the United States said, Tip on it. They were always back home in Massachusetts. Because in America, when you overstay in Washington, you become a Washingtonian and you can lose election like uh, God did in his home state. If he had won the state, he would have won. He's like a Washingtonian. He went to school in Washington. His father was a senator. So all politics. And uh, when I miss you, when I don't come home, I feel it. I'm happy to be back home with you. All politics is long. He touched on Tinubu policies. I may touch on them tomorrow. Uh, just like uh, poverty. Professor Iguan is a metaphysical scientist. Uh, he knows so much about uh, problems. Uh, poverty. Yes, we're going to confront poverty headlong. And uh, you can see from our policies that uh, the commitment to eliminate poverty, to reduce it to the permanent, to the lowest level is there. It's there. Watch us. You see what happens uh, next year. Poverty gradually going. And that's why SIP is being also strengthened. And uh, so, uh, Chilawana, I want to thank you. Samino Turaki. I want to say this, that uh, I have no ambition to run for elective office again. Uh, 2031, I will be 78. No more. We we'll have to encourage the younger ones. Clap for me. As the president bows out in 2031, I bow out with him. No more elective office for Senator George Akume, two terms governor, three. <laughs> Senator and uh, uh, Minister for four years and now Secretary to the government. <laughs> I think I think Senator Okumu has seen quite a lot. Uh, this complex federation uh, called Nigeria, with over 200 million people. So if I have occupied, what again am I looking for? And the younger ones are also here. I want to thank once again. Well, thank you, uh, my friend, uh, uh, Samino. Uh, we belong to the club of 1999. that produced Yaradua. Uh, it's now produced Sashiwaju. But frankly, we are a favored club. <laughs> but certainly, <laughs> thank God for that. And the, finally, I want you to take note of one thing that Nigeria will continue to exist. Existential threats will all of it. Even advanced countries, but they will not go anywhere. We are greater when we are one than when we go our different ways. Nigerians have resolved to live together. 
We like to talk. We don't want to be gagged. But uh, if it is insult you as an elected person, take it in good faith. They don't mean it. I know what you say about me, some. It doesn't bother me. But I want to thank you, uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Benue, who is representing the governor here. The governor was in my house before he left for Lagos for another meeting. I want to thank you and to take our words to him. I have no problem with the governor. I work very hard for him. Why would I have a problem? No way. We want him to succeed. And to succeed in a very meaningful and purposeful manner. What is it that I'm not seeing? Former governor here. Do you have former this, former this, former that? Ah. Wishing him the best. The best. No problem with him whatsoever. Wish him the best. Pray for him. Continue to pray for as you the president. Pray for me too. I need prayers. Continue. <laughs> pray for the for Mr. President and his family. Continue to do so. God should continue to bless him. Family and so on and so forth. God bless you. God bless the chairman of this okay, the chair lady. Now all of you, my brothers and sisters, people at the high table, and those of you sitting here. Tomorrow is another day. Let's be there. Cut it. All right. Be seated, please. Please be seated. Just two minutes to cut his cake. The first man, please. Please be seated. Everyone, please be seated just for two minutes and then we are done. The celebrant himself chose the song Lean on Me. We also have a very special song for him. Before we cut his cake, before he will cut his cake, I beg your pardon. May I invite the chair lady to join me here, please. The chair lady, Dam Pauline Talian, Her Excellency. I would also like to invite. Welcome back from the live telecast. Song, we'll now continue our with our regular programs. Stay tuned. Excellent.